Did you know fitness levels can decline as much as 20% per decade? That is a call to action, my friend, a call to action. Welcome to The Ageless Runner, I'm Ralph. Hey, if you enjoy running and watching running videos, would you mind subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon down in the corner. Thank you so much. Fitness is often measured by VO2 max. V is volume, O2 is oxygen, max, of course, is maximum. So it's the highest amount of oxygen we can consume in a given interval of time when we exercise. And unfortunately, that goes down as we age. Some reasons include that we have less uh, lean muscle mass, our muscles don't work as good, and our heart rate just can't get up high enough to sustain our exercise. The max heart rate goes down as we get older. So there are some activities we can do to improve VO2 max, but before I give you some suggestions, let's jump in the studio and talk about proper breathing when running. You ever gasp for air when you're running? That may mean you're running too fast, or more likely, you're chest breathing. Do you ever get a side stitch when you're running? Again, you're probably chest breathing. Breathing using your chest is not the best way to get the most oxygen into your muscles when you're running. We need to do diaphragmatic breathing, or belly breathing is the best way to, to, to call it. Now, if you're not familiar with the diaphragm, that's a muscle that's below our heart and lungs. It kind of separates the chest cavity from the, from the abdominal cavity. And as it contracts, it creates a vacuum and pulls air into our lungs. And as it relaxes, it pushes the air out. And that's the best way to get the most volume of oxygen into our body when we're running. Now, if you're not familiar with this, you can practice it. Lay down on your bed or on the floor, bend your knee slightly, and rest your hand on your tummy. Or put a TV remote on your belly. Or put a book on your belly. And I'm kind of kidding a little bit. But put something on your tummy that you can feel and see move as you breathe. And breathe in deeply, and you should see your tummy go up. And when you exhale, it should see it go down. And practice breathing through your mouth, taking those deep breaths, and feel your belly go up and down. That's belly breathing. And you want to do that when you run. That's the best way to get oxygen in your body. Now, if this feels a little unfamiliar to you, you may want to practice that. Do it for several minutes. Do it for over several days, several times, until you get that feel of diaphragmatic or belly breathing. Now, the next suggestion is rhythmic breathing. And that is, we want to make sure we get a good inhale to get the most oxygen into our body and I count steps a lot of runners count steps I will count three steps on my inhale and three steps on my exhale that works for me if you run a little slower maybe four and four would work or if you're a little faster maybe two and two but try and get into a rhythm to concentrate on getting that deep inhale and then exhaling all that air out of your body three and three works for me now sometimes i'll do in three and two in other words I'll inhale for three and exhale for two that seems to work better for me sometimes now some sources recommend a three two or a four three that odd combination there the reason being that it alternates the starting foot when you inhale and by doing that it may minimize hip issues i don't know whether it does or doesn't but if you have hip hip issues you might want to consider doing a 3-2 or a 4-3. Now if you do the Galloway run walk run method like I do you could alternate your starting foot on every run cycle. So now that we know how to breathe now that we're into a rhythm of breathing let's go back out on the road and talk about how to increase VO2 max. So my first suggestion is to run at a faster pace for two to five minutes and then walk or slowly jog for an equal amount of time. So what I mean by faster pace, well, imagine the pace you would run three miles. Then imagine the faster pace you would do if you're only running a mile. Run at that faster pace. Now, as you get stronger, you can run a little faster or run a little longer, but you need to run at a faster pace for two to five minutes and then walk or jog for an equal amount of time. And do that for four cycles. So the second interval suggestion is to run hills. So you need kind of a long gradual hill, something you run for a minute or two to go up and then walk or slowly jog back down. And eventually you want to get up to where you can do that maybe 10 times, but start off with two to four and kind of see how you go over time and keep running those hills. That's a great way to increase VO2 max and make yourself stronger. Now, if you can't get outside, you don't have a hill, you can do these type of intervals on a treadmill. Now, I would suggest if you're doing the uh, faster pace interval, set your treadmill incline at about 1%. 1% mimics road running, not zero, 1%. Now, if you want to do the hill interval on a treadmill, you need to set a higher incline. You might start at 4%, see how that goes, adjust it up and down based on your capability. But both of those intervals can be done on a treadmill inside the gym. So my suggestion is add these intervals into maybe every second or third short run day. Uh, do these intervals and then continue on your short run. And before you know it, your VO2 max will be better 
be running easier, be running longer, and you just feel more fit. Hey, thanks again for watching my videos. Again, if you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button in the corner and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.